Zealand members went on to form one of the most powerful and successful of the modern Golden Dawn temples with direct lineage to the original order. Various mystical and magical depths were created and came out of the Farara. People such as Jack Taylor and Frank Salt and later influenced by Dr. Israel Riggedy, Pat Seleski came onto the scene in 1979 in New Zealand and was trained by Jack Taylor. This was the beginning of the rebirth of the modern temples of the Golden Dawn along with Israel Regedi, Pat Seleski, who was inspired by Israel Regedi and who also helped Israel Regedi make various corrections um, to the knowledge of the Golden Dawn. They worked together and they promoted and they are responsible for the phenomenon that we have seen in the creation of the modern temples of the Golden Dawn. Now let's expand a little bit upon the history of the far around, get some uh, timelines uh, a little more accurate. Um, so of course Farara, we're going to get uh, some of this information from various sources uh, including articles and also the Wikipedia. Um, so I'm not just pulling uh, these numbers uh, out of my ass, you know, I've, I've done a bit of research but you know some of these timelines could be disputable but anyway the Farara of course as you know is the name of the building which housed the New Zealand branch of the magical order of the Stella Matutina which Dr. Falcon um, headed. It was a splinter group. It was an offshoot um, of the Golden uh, Dawn which was headed by McGregor Mathis. So the Farara was designed and con the construction was overseen by one of New Zealand's most famous architects and a senior member of the order, uh, James Walter Chapman Taylor. Okay, so the Farara was one of the last surviving temples that could trace its lineage back to the original um, mystical order of the Golden Dawn and to the Stella Matutina more correctly it was the only temple to operate in a permanent purpose-built building for a long long time until the Ciceros in, in the United States um, you know around 1978-79 um, started his temple so the foundations for the Order of New Zealand were laid by Reginald Gardner who was born in New South Wales, Australia and he was the son of an Anglican vicar and brother of the Ang Anglican vicar of St. Luke's Church uh, of course in Havelock, North New Zealand where he finally settled in 1907. He formed about him an artistic, cultural and spiritual group whose activities became known as the Havelock Work. Um, and as a result he produced a publication called The Forerunner. The Havelock work grew and in time the group became known as the Society of the Southern Cross. In 1910 Reverend Father J. Fitzgerald travelled to New Zealand on church business and he was introduced to the group. He was suitably impressed and prior to his return to Britain he promised to stay in touch and do what he could to help. In due course, he wrote that if further progress were to be made, a certain people of his acquaintance would need to come out of England. Therefore, in 1912, Dr. Robert Falcon, who was the chief of the Order of the Stella Matutina, arrived. Assisted by his appointment as inspector of the Australasian Colleges of the SRIA by William Wynne Westcott, who was one of the original chiefs of the uh, mystical order of the Golden Dawn and who was the Supreme Magus of the SRIA. 
So, Dr. Robert Falcon's lineage was, uh, you know, linked to the founding fathers, you could say, of the um, Order of the uh, Golden Dawn, and uh, was very uh, closely connected with um, William Westcott, who was the chief architect of that order. So, travelling with his wife and daughter, he initiated a group of 24 members into the Smaragdum Thalassus Temple Number no. 49, which uh, became commonly known as the Farera. Now, the Farera was the name of the, the house that was built, and um, the temple was uh, in, in the basement uh, of the house. All right, so a sizable piece of land was donated and a home for the order was constructed, which they named Farera, or House of the Sun. Farera is Maori and it means House of the Sun. It was in the basement of this house that the large temple was built. The Farera was a large 3,000 square foot building. Uh, it still is, with the upper floor having the same footprint as the table uh, temple below. The reinforced concrete construction was an innovative choice at the time when there was still strong resistance to any building material other than timber. Okay, because most of the houses in New Zealand were made of wood. It was one of the first major um, concrete buildings in New Zealand. Okay, uh, but Farara was to be very, uh, a very different building from the domestic home and the advantages of fire resistance, low maintenance, permanence and durability appealed. Also the monolithic quality could not be ignored and it was desirable that the temple should be of one continuous form. The reinforced walls were six inches thick and were poured by sections at a time into boxing of around uh, a meter in height. Uh, during the th their three month stay, sufficient members had been initiated to make a beginning and the building commissioned and sufficiently advanced to enable its consecration. Before leaving New Zealand to return to England, a warrant was issued establishing the Smaragdum Thalassus Temple number no. 49 of the Order of the Stella Matutina. The three chiefs that appeared on the warrant were Reginald Gardner, Mason Chambers, and most probably Harold Large, or possibly Thomas Chambers. There's a dispute there. I don't know why that's disputed. Uh, obviously, some documentation has been lost, uh, or part of it is illegible. A trust had been set up to manage the monetary affairs of the order, with the trustees being Mason Chambers, his wife Margaret Chambers, uh, the younger John Chambers and Reginald Gardner. The trustees stated that the group was formed for the purpose of instituting, carrying on or developing such scientific, religious, charitable or similar work as the trustees shall in this discretion deem expedient and also for the purpose of aiding and assisting the carrying out or developing of literacy work in all its branches and crafts work and similar or analogous work which the trustees may in their absolute discretion approve or for such one or more or all of the above purposes as the trustees may from time to time determine. All right, so it's pretty garbled uh, verbiage there. It's going way back. Uh, so that was a bit of a mouthful. John Van de Delzin, who spent most of his adult life in the order and who had been a temple warden and one of its last chiefs, stated that the order used a threefold system of training like this, ceremonial, meditation and personal study. The ceremonial involved a series of grades with an appropriate ritual for each grade, rather on the lines of Masonic degrees but based on the symbolism of the Tree of Life, which is the Hebrew Kabbalah. There was also a special ceremony of a more cosmic nature to mark the vernal and autumnal equinoxes. 
Around 1916, at the invitation of the members of the New Zealand branch and with the offer of uh, life tenancy of Farera, Dr. Falcon and his family returned to New Zealand for good, where they settled. He issued a new constitution for the Order of the Stella Matutina in the same year, informing members that the Mother Temple of the Order was now in New Zealand. The order, governed by uh, three ruling chiefs, prospered under their leadership. By the time of the death of Dr. Falcon in 1926 or so, it had been a very active membership and was well established. Its membership included two Anglican bishops, uh, General Sir Arthur Russell, Lord Jellicoe, uh, Governor General of New Zealand and members of Parliament, as well as local dignitaries, officials, uh, church members, uh, teachers, and other politicians. Entrance to the temple by the candidate for initiation was via a secret staircase behind a wardrobe located in Dr. Falcon's surgery, which descended down into the basement. Halfway down the stairs where the candidate was required to await further instructions was a landing known as the cave, lined with hessian curtains on which Egyptian figures were worked in light blue. After an interval of time, the candidate was met by two temple officers, dressed in robes and Egyptian headdresses. Blindfolded by one of them, the candidate was then led into the temple where the ceremony of initiation began, and that was the neophyte initiation. In 1931, a devastating earthquake hit the area, and many buildings were leveled or damaged. With its fortress-like construction, though, Farara was completely unscathed. The big earthquake of 1931 did no damage whatsoever to the Farara building, except that the black pillar, being top-heavy, fell onto the paw of the black sphinx on the north side of the steps to the dais in the temple below the house, and that was the only slight damage um, which was suffered. Mr. Gardner replaced Dr. Falcon as greatly honoured Chief of the Order, and with Mrs. and Miss Falcon ruled for a further stable period of another 33 years. In its heyday during the 1930s, it has been estimated that its membership numbered some 300 men and women, and during its 60 plus year history, that approximately four to 500 people had been initiated. It was during this time that the temple distanced itself from the affairs of the Stella Matutina in Britain and renamed itself simply the Order of the Smaragdum Thalassus. So that was the 1930s, and then of course war broke out from... Uh, uh, or, or things started getting worse in, in Europe uh, around that time until the, the late 40s. In 1949, in the last issue of The Lantern, Mrs. Falcon stated, Perhaps before very long, someone else will take up the torch that I laid down and endeavor to carry the light a little further. Put as briefly as I can express it, I think it is the conviction of the reality of a spiritual world, not beyond or above our ordinary everyday world, but interwoven with it here and now. In 1959, Mr. Gardner and Mrs. Falcon died, followed by Miss Falcon three years later. During the late 1960s, Frater Albertus of the Paracelsus Research Society visited Farer Ra. He was very interested in visiting the order and also establishing uh, some of his work in New Zealand. He reported this visit to members of the society in one of their bulletins. In the heart, in the heart of the North Island, New Zealand has two main islands. There's an interesting spot where much activity centers about the ancient wisdom. Not only are the Maoris custodians of this ancient wisdom, but the later settlers brought much with them from Europe that they know how to perpetuate. Dr. Falcon was one of them. Under the Maori name Farara, 
House of the Sun, the Order of the Golden Dawn has its present quarters and underground temple in a beautiful secluded and heavily landscaped place. The chiefs, as they are called, heading Farera, uh, Messrs. Von Dedelsen and Salt and Mrs. Jones, whom we met, proved to be very fine people with a fervent interest in perpetuating the work of the Golden Dawn brought to New Zealand by Dr. Falcon before the First World War. However, the decline started and by 1978 it was clear that Farara was a spent force. Therefore, on the 24th of August 1978, a letter was circulated to members announcing its closure. Much to the reg regret of many esoteric historians, they burnt most of the group's regalia, or so it is thought, uh, with other items finding its way into private collector's hands of the remaining adepts. Some of these artifacts have been uh, located and others are still, well, the whereabouts are unknown and may have been since destroyed. Um, so most of the group's regalia, temple furnishings and records were lost or destroyed. Fortunately something survived, including the temple's pillars, the two sphinxes which flanked either side of the dais steps, and many copies of the rituals and, and lectures which were passed on and preserved and are now in um, private hands um, in the museum. And the Farara is also in private hands and has been registered as Category 1 Protected Building by the New Zealand Historic Places Trust. <laughs>